My name is Jacob Warren. Welcome to this lesson on chopping for the double bass. Before we get on with this introduction to the triple chop, I just wanted to say that I've really enjoyed making this series of videos on chopping for the double bass. In the future, I'm hoping to make more of these videos, including some long form exercise videos where we can practice together some of the topics we've already discussed, some new topic videos, uh, as well as some series of videos on topics outside of chopping. To that end, I've set up a Patreon page, the link is in the description, uh, where you are able to support me in creating this new video content. I'm also hoping to offer a monthly online workshop to Patreon subscribers where we can work on whatever topics are of interest. So have a look at that link if you're interested and uh, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the video. Today we're gonna dive into an interesting variation on the basic chop stroke. It's called the triple chop and it basically allows us to get a bunch of really quick hits instead of just one single chop hit. So I'll play you a little bit so you can see how it sounds. There are a couple different ways that you can accomplish the triple chop stroke. The first one that I use is basically an extended version of our basic chop stroke. Now if you remember from the beginning, the chop stroke is not only the downstroke component, but also the release component. That gives us two sounds, so we only need to add a third one to make it into a triplet or a triple chop. You can accomplish this by having your downstroke, adding a scrape up the string, followed by the up release, and that gives us three hits, so one, two, three, or chop, scrape, release. We're gonna combine this with one final chop to basically make uh, the effect that a drummer might have if they play a triplet into a downstroke, so da ba da ba, right? Slowly, it's gonna sound like this. Chop, scrape, up, down. So that final chop at the end. So let's try and get that in a rhythm. We're gonna go one, two, three, one. And again, one, two, three, one. When I was first practicing the triple chop, I had this basic concept, this idea of how I wanted it to move, uh, but speeding it up was actually fairly challenging. I found that I had to have a lot of patience and use a lot of slow-mo cameras on my phone to see what was actually going on, make sure that I was getting all of those components, the down, the scrape, and the up, and the final down evenly uh, and with good sound. So faster, it's gonna sound like this. And I'll set up a slow-mo shot here so we can see more specifically what's going on. Let's take a look at how you can use the triple chop in a groove we've already worked on. This will be using the triple chop in a halftime groove, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play one full normal cycle of the halftime groove, and then the second time around, I'm gonna use this triple chop as a lead-in to where my chop stroke would normally be. So it sounds like this. That's the first method that I use to accomplish the triple chop. The second, uh, is a little bit different, and it has to do with a series of downstrokes that precede the final downstroke of your chop. What's really cool about this second method is that it's not limiting you to only three hits. You could have four, five, six, or even more. For this version of the triple chop, we're going to be doing a series of downstrokes that are guided by gravity before playing the final chop stroke. So quickly, it's gonna look like this. You can see that if I want to add more strokes than just the triplet, I can do so by just adding more downstrokes before my final chop. I find that on bass, it's really helpful to think of these as a series of up bows. Now, most of your motion is actually going to be vertical, but having a little bit of up bow horizontal motion is gonna help make those strokes sound a little bit louder than they normally would given the size of our strings compared to other string instruments. Slowly, the motion is gonna look like this. I'm gonna point my hair towards the ground, just like with the normal chop stroke, and I'm going to 
let the bow travel down the string. And as it does, it's gonna catch that string and I'm gonna help it release a little bit every time. Ideally, you wanna use gravity as much as possible here, but I find that I do need to control the release a little bit given the size of our bows and the size of our strings. So we can try it just with the normal triplet here. And go. So you can see that I'm moving a lot horizontally, but still most of my motion is actually vertical. And if you want to practice adding more notes, we can try six now, we can try six strokes. Now I find that this one is very difficult to teach because the motion actually changes uh, when it's slow. You're working with a constant. Gravity is going to act how gravity normally acts and you can't slow it down, unfortunately. So what you need to do is figure out what the basic motion is gonna feel like and look like, and then start practicing at a tempo that actually will utilize gravity appropriately. That's somewhere around here. Now, here's a little example of using this type of triple chop in a groove. I think that the triple chop is a very useful and fun tool to have in your chopping tool bag. It can be a way of adding some variety to your grooves by having a lead in to where the chop stroke would normally be, or to just kind of have variety in the, in the timbres and sounds that you're creating. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on triple chopping and stay tuned for more.